Hi, this is Olivier Blanchard with Futurum Research, and I'm here at Desso System 3D Experience Forum. And I'm here with John Tomlin of WSU and Jeff Smith with Desso System. Uh, before we begin, would you guys like to introduce yourselves? Yeah, so John Tomlin, Vice President of Research at Wichita State University. And I'm Jeff Smith, the A&D IDIS Lab Director for Dassault Systems. Okay, that's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool, so let's, let's begin. Um, so Dan and I are working on a, uh, a book on the future of work. So I'm really happy that I got you guys to, to sit down with me today because I'm going to have some questions for you about that. Um, but first I wanted to ask you what brought um, your two organizations together initially? Uh, and can you share when you met and how long it was from the first meeting uh, to when the 3D Experience Center uh, actually opened at Wichita State University? Gosh, I can't even remember that long ago, right? Three years, I think. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for me, it was basically drawing a rectangle around the United States and intersecting it and saying, I want something in the heart of America. And there was Kansas. And when I flew the first time to Wichita and I walked out of the airport, there was this sign like 100 yards from the plane that said, Air Capital of the World. And it was like, ah, this is interesting. And then I got to meet John Tomlin and then Dr. Bardot, the president of WSU. And there it was a, a match made in heaven. <laughs> we had the same kind of ideas as how do you innovate the future? And with a nice golf course, 18 hole golf course, it was a perfect place to put an innovation campus, which they already there were conceiving. Go. And what we were looking at when I, when I met Jeff is looking at a partner that could really take us to the next level of, of future of, of manufacturing. And that's when I mean, all, all the companies in Wichita, the airspace companies in Wichita, they all knew Dassault Systems, but what we really truly need to do was to innovate, do things differently than we did before, challenge everything that we used to thought we knew and do it differently. And that's where, that's where Jeff came along uh, with, with the ideas. So the two of us got together and created the 3D Experience Center in Wichita State. Outstanding. And we kind of feed off each other. I, 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 I think I see that. Yeah. Okay, so real quick, can, can you share the, the background of the uh, National Institute for Aviation, uh, or NIAR, and, and yes. the certification? So, so I'm the executive, uh, executive director there, and we have a 35-year history of working with the aviation industry, and the aviation industry is a little bit special. It's different from the automobile sector because you've got this thing called certification and the certification is sometimes seen as a roadblock for innovation because getting things onto a plane, they want to know how long is it going to take, how much is it going to cost, and how much is it going to yeah. cost to certify. So really what we've done with the 3D Experience Center is interweave the certification process. If you think about a seat test, I mean companies hate that. Shooting every, every seat that you shoot down a sled, $6,000. What if I could do that virtually? And, and get the certification authority to buy off on that. You know, that's the types of things that we're doing is a virtual certification that really, um, the companies really like that type of strategy. Right, so faster to market, probably. Gets innovation into their products. Yeah, more cost Where certification's not a hurdle. Right, okay, excellent. Okay, so how does uh, NIAR help aviation specifically? You know, NI NIAR is a place where I can get different innovations from different companies and, and still leave their IP alone, Yeah. but, but they can come together like in the materials uh, work that we do. I mean, we do certification of materials there that can be shared among industries where they don't have to do them for themselves. Okay. So, so we're, 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 we're a common ground and that's where, you know, working with the SO Systems for the 3D Experience Center. I mean, that's a common ground as, as far as innovation goes. Right. So. Okay. And we so, wanted to be able to take, you know, from the material science yeah. of certification and create a multi-scale solution. So from material science to the actual design to the simulation and optimization of that design, the manufacturing, the test, and the optimization of it, and integrate that all together and be able to do it in the virtual world from a process and product standpoint before we do it in the physical world. Okay, right. so that, that, impl that implies working with specific companies, right? So how does this scale to, um, to, to a model that can help companies, other companies, and across an industry or across several industries make big gains in innovation? Well, we purposely designed the 3D Experience Center within the Innovation Campus. Yeah 
to be able to support whether you're a startup, whether you're a supplier, which there's somewhat 300 plus suppliers that is true. in Wichita, or an OEM. And so the whole idea is creating that ecosystem with all these different technologies, with this system of work, we could take any one of those and bring them in there, either collaborate together or separately to be able to invent the future. And it's all about creating a new system of work that allows us to reduce cycle time, okay. reduce cost. I'm going to circle that's back key. to that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Because uh, that's that's really at the heart of, of the, the question I really want to ask. Uh, but first, I, I'm curious about some of the challenges or, or some of the things that your your clients and the companies you work with um, come back with in terms of the biggest challenges that they have with certification. Uh, it is is new materials, yeah. new innovations. I mean, those are those are the typical stumbling blocks. I mean, you know, usually what we see is a, is is a product life cycle from a new innovation to get into the aerospace industry, eight years. And what we're down, I mean, eight years, you're dealing with a whole different platform yeah. almost. So we gotta get that down lower. I mean, two years right. max, from concept to certified product. Are you able to do that? We want to. Yeah, get there. I mean, I mean, but we're not gonna be able to do it. We're not gonna be able to achieve it without the 3D Experience Center platform. Right. It's, it, it, yeah, I mean, we've been in this business for 35 years, so so we know what it takes to, to work with industry like that. This is this is a game changer. Okay. And to uh, and yeah. to think that they can, I mean, they've been able to demonstrate that they can do this. When you take like a sea crash, for example, mm -hmm. be able to do that in the virtual world, a virtual sea crash, and get it certified by the FAA. Right. That's that. that bird strike. Yeah. Right. I mean, <laughs> it's a very course. dynamic problem. Yeah. Get it virtually certified. Right. right. Okay, so we've talked about the technology, we've talked about the infrastructure a little bit. Let's talk about people. Uh, and so, you know, we circle back to the, the topic of the future of work and what that type of facility and, and model really could, could do uh, for the, uh, the workforce of the future. And obviously there's an adjustment that needs to be made. There's a lot of fear about automation, taking everybody's jobs. Mm -hmm. So how do you see the, this fitting into uh, a future built around human machine relationships and, and where workers, whether they're knowledge or information workers or actual you know, manufacturers and, and people who get their hands on materials, um, can, can work within a, a, a dynamic, um, very high tech environment. How, how, does this, um, how does this model fit into that? You want to take the first crack? Go ahead. So, I mean, you know, anytime somebody says that this robot is going to, per, you know, replace a, a human worker, no, yeah, I, I believe it's just going to onshore another job. I mean, if if you look at the workforce that we're developing, there there are more skilled workforce. I mean, think think about, I mean, we don't have, we don't have people going out with screwdrivers today, manual screwdrivers working on the factory floor. You know what? They they automated to a to a drill. Now they're all made into a robot. There's still a human in the loop there. Right. We can just go faster and be more productive with the types of products that we produce. And I, I think that's what the industry is going to demand. I mean, when you have a car that drives itself, when you have a drone that flies itself, I mean, those are very complex uh, pieces of vehicles. Right. And, and we can and we can create new skill sets. Yes. You know that new skill that is it is not invented today and we have the opportunity to create that new skill set based on this new system of work within the 3D Experience Center. Right. And students can fit into this really well. Right. right. Very the experiment. embedded workforce can fit into this yeah. and the future workforce can fit into this. And that, that's really the beauty of what we have set up at, at the Innovation Campus is we have both of those workforce colliding and, and creating these positive collisions. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Final words. <laughs> Anything else that, that we haven't covered that you might the want to talk about? The future is exciting. The future is <laughs> yeah. exciting, absolutely. And for students, I think yeah. for the first, this year, WSU has more students than they've ever yes. had in their university history. And I know it's because of what we're doing with the absolutely. whole innovation campus. I bet. So that's exciting, and it'll just continue to grow. Excellent. So. Well, well done, gentlemen. John, Jeff, yeah. thank you. Thank this you. This is Olivia Blanchard. Thank you.